everybody. Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode number 136. You're here with your host, Nick McCandless. On this sweet show, we have Anthony Ta. A very, 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 very sleepy, sleep-deprived Anthony Ta. Yeah. That's it. I think that's all yeah, we have yeah, last that's week it, as well. And I, and, I, and I hope I don't, my face doesn't fall on the keyboard as I'm sitting here dozing. <laughs> yeah, so it may be a one-man podcast if Anthony isn't able to survive. That's okay. I know, I think, I think, I, I know you're very good at uh, hosting a radio show on your own, so that should be good. <laughs> you did do Nick's Gaming View for a long time, so you, you get pretty good on... Uh, yeah. Talking for uh, talking for a bit, maybe. Nick's gaming views what got me to move to California. It was my show. <laughs> That's what got me. Dude, out here. if if we ever in office, that show has to come back. Oh yeah, for sure. I just I don't have the time. Like, especially on a daily basis, is a full time job doing that show. Like while I was uh, working in Hollywood, producing that on a daily basis, it was almost a full day between reading the news, writing the script. Filming it, editing it, publishing it. It was I'd say it probably took about six hours a day. Which I definitely don't just have I don't have just six hours to kill every day. I wish. If there was a thir- if the if it was a thirty hour day maybe. But I do not have the time for that. And even when I'm doing it on the weekend, just finding six hours to do it on the weekend is very tough. So it's a show you have to put out there like ASAP because it's a news show. So, yes, but when the office happens, it's something that will have to come back. Are sure. you going to bring back the over-the-top dramatic intro that you? <laughs> used of course, to have? it'll be a new one, but it'll be it'll be in crazy cinematic. Yes, you showed me. I remember way back in the day, you showed the original, like you had the shortened version. Which you used for most of it, but I remember when you first had the new intro, you had the super long version, and I sat there and I watched him like, "Holy crap! What? What? Like do you? <laughs> do you really need this giant build up to your show?" It's like you're. It was like you're about to go into war or something. It was yeah, great. except you are hyping yourself up for Nick's gaming view <laughs> on the gamer access. It's fantastic. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, I'm just, but I'm just like, okay. <laughs> well, all right. So let's talk about the news. There's very little news this week, guys. Very little news. So I'm going to be covering news stories we usually don't talk about just because there's really nothing else to talk about. So the Nintendo PlayStation was a thing. You heard me right. The Nintendo playstation so there was a prototype that was leaked of a never released nintendo playstation which eventually led to sony just making their own video game console so someone had had a conversation with shuhei yoshida about this and he found it quite comical um and pretty much yeah it was called the playstation but it had super nintendo cartridge support but also had disc support so you could play Nintendo games or PlayStation games. Um, he's Yeah, so she, quote from Yoshida, he said, quote, When I joined Ken Kutaragi's team in 1993, 1993, that was the year I was born, there was a system called PlayStation, two words, that had both Super Nintendo cartridge support and some disc game support. Actually, I played some games on it as well, end quote. Um... They had asked about if the prototype was legit, and he said it's more. I think it's more fun to keep it kind of a mystery. So he's just Yoshida being Yoshida, just playing around with the topic. But could you imagine if Sony and Nintendo would have ended up working together and I came out with a console? That would be pretty think, crazy. I don't think it would have been the most successful thing, but it would have been a curiosity. Yeah, like if, I could, it, it like to me because at that point, if Nintendo and Sony came out with a CD-based add-on for the Super Nintendo, I mean, came out with the system that played Super Nintendo games and some disc games, to me that would seem like a expensive curiosity, like a Sega CD. Like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the PS One, but it right. would be an interesting experiment. Uh, of yeah. Course, 
Yeah. Yeah, Nintendo's is kind of going down this path where, I don't know, you start to wonder if they're going to remain their own company or if they're going to become acquired. Um, so they're working on their ne- their NX game machine that's supposedly, possibly, I think it's supposed to be coming out next year or announced next year. Um, I think it's supposed to come out next year. Uh, but the Wii U hasn't been that successful. They're cranking out a lot of good games. They're selling the games, but they're still limited to a small user base on the Wii U. And it just comes with those things, and you see Nintendo, they're teaming up with this company for mobile games. It's like, Nintendo going to be the same company we know it as in five years? Or are they going to be acquired? Or where is Nintendo going? We don't know. Um, so if Nintendo were, let's say, some crazy, they become part of Sony or Microsoft, or they become like just a third-party publisher... Um, I think that they would do great because their franchises are amazing. Their their games are amazing, but they just I don't think as far as handling the console market, they're the best at it. Obviously, as far as portables, they're doing really well. Um, but as far as consoles, the Wii, yes, the Wii was super successful, but that was because it was a breakthrough in gaming. Uh, the Wii U was not. The Wii U was just like an extension of the Wii platform. So, and there's been various hiccups and problems with Nintendo's business strategy for it, and they've made some pretty questionable decisions. So, who knows what's going to happen? But, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if one day Nintendo's like, okay, we're not doing consoles, we're just doing games. And you can buy your games everywhere. The thing about Nintendo, though, is you never know what they're going to do. And, again, it is a constant love-hate relationship. You sometimes love what they're doing, and other times you hate what they're doing. I don't even know what's going to happen on the NX console. I don't know if they're going to decide, you know what, let's actually apply some common sense now and make a conventional but inexpensive system. We're not going to go out for all that horsepower, but we're going to make a conventional, cheap, easy-to-make system in the same sense that the 3DS is a cheap, simple system to make. Or they could just go all out because they're like, well, we need to come up with the next controller frontier because we just need to come up with the next frontier for frontier's sake. Like, every game console, Nintendo tries to do something new in the case of controls. Like, the N64 had an analog stick. GameCube had... uh, I'm trying to think. GameCube had the wireless controller thing. Um, the Wii, yeah, we know what the Wii is. And the Wii U was the gamepad thing. So I don't know what the NX they're going to apply common sense or just freaking go overboard and come up with another control thing, control scheme that no one's thought of yet. What I do know is the handheld and console teams have been merged together. So maybe there's going to be a little bit of lunacy, but with a lot more common sense. Because the console, because the portable team has plenty of common sense and knows how to make a lot of money. The console team is a little wacko and decided that using an asymmetrical, um, using some weird, whacked tricore power PC architecture that st- traces its roots back to a 1998 Mac computer, they thought that was a great idea for hardware decision. So I'm just like, okay, well, now that you put lunacy and common sense together, what are you going to get? Hopefully something that makes sense, something that's pretty cool, but also makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I as for what... I'll continue. As for whether Nintendo will be bought, as for if Nintendo's going to stop consoles, I uh, I don't think so. At least in the short run. If they're going to stop consoles, it's probably going to be at least another 10 years. Because their portables do sell. And their game consoles, well, Nintendo still has a lot of cash. So I'm pretty sure they'll keep going unless their next system sells only like 500,000 systems. And they'll probably yeah, give up on consoles. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to how their next console does. Yeah, if their next system sells only like 2 million and then just dies, okay. Because I think like right about now the Wii U is doing worse than the GameCube. And the GameCube was kind of like a low That's point for Nintendo awful. console sales. Yeah. Even, but that being said, the GameCube is one of the most loved game consoles I see out there. Um, 
Yeah, I don't have no idea what's going to happen with NX. I mean, like, at this point, I'm freaking asking, it's like, so what's going to happen with the Wii U? Because if the new Zelda game comes out on NX instead of Wii U, well, then I just bought the Wii Oh, man, that's going to be annoying. What Nintendo needs to do with their next console is, sure, make it a little bit more powerful than the Wii U, but it doesn't need to be PS4 or Xbox One. Like, find a good middle ground between Wii U and PlayStation 4 and price that thing day one 200 bucks. And come out with good games. Like yeah, have like, Mario Kart think, and like a Zelda game day one. I think what would make sense for them is to um, make it easy to make stuff for. Like what? Like one of the like one of the reasons why the 3ds. Yeah, just and, make it a cheap yeah. custom PC like the PS4 and Xbox One. I don't think they're gonna go that route because I mean they could because. They freaking teamed up with AMD for the graphics chip, so I don't know. Maybe they could, but well, like one of the reasons why the Game Boy was so successful and the 3DS are so successful is because they're it's easy to make games for them. I'm not joking. I made a game for the Game Boy Advance a month and a half. It's, it's actually pretty easy to make a game for the Game Boy Advance if you know how to program, I should say. Uh, and on 3DS, the same thing is because they use like the ARM architecture, and the ARM architecture is used in just about everything. Smart TVs, smartphones, especially. Um, it, it's basically one. It's basically like the most popular computer architecture in the like entire world is the ARM. So what I think they could do is like freaking b- use like a, a very high end ARM architecture in the next system. I mean, the system's probably not going to be super powerful and Xbox P- PS4 powerful. So, hey, and then you got an architecture that people can use instead of this awkward, not really making sense, tri-core processor with weird power PC tidbits that you need to have a PhD in power PC to use. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Right. So you have to make you have to make it easy to make stuff for it. But you also, but I also think they need to be more open about it too, because it's like they kind of have to be more willing to accept people in. Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that still have Nintendo nostalgia and would love to make indie games for it, but they can't really make indie games for it if they don't have dev kits. And if they do have dev kits, it's for something that's so weirdly complicated that it's hard to make stuff for. Right. So I feel like maybe the NX should be more open and willing to accept, hey, you know what, maybe these Nintendo fans actually want to make an indie game for our system. And uh, conventional controls. Because I can't really think what the next frontier is. If the NX is some VR device, I'm just gonna be like, really? Uh, uh, I'm not joking. If the NX is a VR device, I'm just be like, okay, I no, I'm sorry that that is a little too far right there. That that is way too far. That's probably what it is, right? VR headset controls. Because <laughs> they need they need they need the next frontier of controls. Let's let, let's do a headset. Let's just beat Sony to the punch with uh, like let's beat Morpheus to the punch and offer Nintendo's own proprietary and oh uh, man. Yeah, uh, conventional controls would be nice. Like when I bought my Wii U, one of the first things I bought without a doubt is um Pro Controller. And I use my Pro Controller to play everything. I don't use the gamepad that much. I always use the Pro Controller. Which, by the way, comes with an insanely ridiculous sixty-hour battery life, which I have. Which, yeah, I would that would, that thing that that battery just doesn't die. Sixty hours must be. And nice. it has freaking yeah, and it functions like a normal controller with rumble and freaking sixty-hour battery life. And I'm sitting here, and then I look at my PS4 controller, and you know the the Wii U Pro controller is only like 40, 40 or 50 bucks and then i look at my ps4 controller and i'm just like i wonder how come you don't have 30 how i wonder how come you don't even have half that battery life was what well, i asked to the ps4 DualShock 4 um anyways yeah so um nx i have no idea it's nintendo 
like Nintendo's E3 Direct at uh, 2014 was good. Nintendo Direct in 2015, it was like, I just don't care about almost everything they talked about. Sorry. Yeah. Man, I say, I, in order for I, the NX to be a success, it needs to come out super cheap and just have a lot of good games day one. And it has to be open, too. You can't just, you can't be all huddling up the system being an overprotective parent to it. Because right. if you do, then people aren't going to make stuff for it, and if people don't make stuff for it, well, then who's going to really buy it? And yeah, you have your first parties, but your first parties don't turn out like, the thing about the Wii U is that last year was so awesome for the Wii U that it was, like, the best console last year. I mean, freaking last year was the best year you could buy a Wii U. But then this year, there's, uh, Splatoon? I, I, and Mario Party 10? I think that's it? Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a constant up-down. One year is awesome, but the next year it's gonna not be too great. So, I think they need to make the platform more open to developers. Yeah, my theory is that this Zelda game they should offer the Wii U, I don't think that's ever going to come to the Wii U. I think they're probably working on that for the next Nintendo console. It'll probably be a day one release. That would be the smart move to make. I'm not saying it's best for those who bought a Wii U, but it'd be the smart move to make. Hmm. If the NX is coming out next year, why release a Zelda for the Wii U next year? It makes no sense. That would piss a lot of people off, including myself. It would, but... Because we bought Wii U's to have a Wii U Zelda game. And no, and this isn't like the case with the GameCube. In the case of the GameCube, at least you had Wind Waker, which was, you know, a game designed for the GameCube and came out on the GameCube. And Twilight Princess, well, what happened to Twilight Princess was there was... A, the Wii version came out first because as a launch title, that was huge for the time. The GameCube version, which was the actual normal version of the game, came out a month later, but no one ever really remembers it. So, yeah, there was that. If Zelda does come out on the NX, then it's going to be like, well, now what? Yeah, but I'm willing to bet that's what's going to happen, though. Because, I'd be honest with you, if the NX is coming out next year, Zelda also comes out next year. So it's like, well... Did Nintendo just butcher their own timing? That's what I'm saying, dude. I, I guarantee you that the next Zelda is being developed for the NX. And you know what the surprise? And you know what the thing is? Is that it's not that surprising if they butcher it because Nintendo is not exactly known for having common sense. Let's make an online shooting paintball shooting game with no voice chat. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah, well, the Splatoon for you. I mean, I, I mean, I like, get why they did it because they want to keep that Nintendo community, but still. Yeah, well, that community is—they're gonna find some way around that community, anyways. It's really yeah, hard but, for a team of people to watch over hundreds of thousands of users. Yeah, but parents don't have to worry about their kids getting online and hearing a bunch of like curse words their and derogatory terms. Parents not worry about their kids going online. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I mean, they can go on a computer, yeah. Hmm. Nah. But I don't know. On to the next topic. We'll see what happens with Nintendo. Uh, we'll talk. Well, we talked briefly about Project Morpheus. So Sony asked, they're "Like, okay, so you guys are supposed to be coming out with Project Morpheus next year? Uh, how about the price?" And they said, "Quote: We we're talking about launching next year. So typically, we don't talk about pricing one year ahead of time." We announced the price of PS4 at E3 the year of launch, so that's five months before the launch, so it's too early. It's not like we're waiting for Oculus to announce their price. We still have work to do to know the exact to know exactly the cost of the goods and so on. So, I don't know. Project Morpheus, unfortunately, we still have not gotten our hands on that. Um, see how good it is, how heavy it is, how comfortable or uncomfortable it is. And we still know the price. I mean, virtual reality is not cheap. It's not like this thing is going to be a hundred bucks. It is probably going to be three hundred fifty dollars. Would be my guess. Um, and I don't know. I'm not sold on VR. I was really surprised that at E3 there was little to no 
Project Morpheus talk. I was really expecting a lot of Project Morpheus talk. It's coming. It's supposed to be coming out next year, and we still haven't heard really seen anything new. Whereas Microsoft freaking took Hololens and shoved it onto the stage with Minecraft. Yeah, with Minecraft and blew people's minds away. Technically, with, it was super impressive. Oh yeah, from a technical standpoint, from a programmer standpoint, from a you know potential standpoint for it it is incredible actually did you notice how the camera up there had this gigantic super bulky setup just so hololens could be displayed to the crowd oh well, yeah and in in a set in a way that makes sense yeah yep. freaking hololens like it's freaking amazing potential as far as practical usage uh i don't know like the connect like I've worked with Connect before and as a device to make stuff for. It has so much potential at everything except games. The problem is, is that as far as practical applications, besides the voice recognition, you don't really use it. Like you're using it mainly for voice recognition, right? Right. Which you could just use. Well, I don't even use it for that, to be honest. My Connect just collects dust. I don't even use it for voice recognition. I like, literally do Bronson, not use my Connect. Yeah, like with, with Bronson, the only two things I ever see, or three things I should say, he's ever used the uh, Connect for was the camera for streaming, the voice recognition. Oh, and I do use it for dance. streaming. Yes, that's the yeah. only thing I use it for. Yeah. So uh, streaming, dancing games, and voice recognition. But outside of that, not nothing else. So I'm just sitting here and I'm just like, well, that's a really expensive one hundred dollar peripheral. It's 150, um, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's 150. Yeah, probably 150. I say 100 because they go from the 300 to the 400. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. But you also do lose a game from the from whatever bundle you bought it from at 300. dollars But right. yeah, but having worked with Connect, it's just programming it. It's like it is a really awesome piece of tech. The original Connect, it has so much potential considering how much stuff they have to shove into that thing through a USB 2.0 plug. It's fantastic. And, you know, there are demos and tutorials out there that you can make, like, basic stuff with it. And, man, that depth sensor camera, it's really amazing when you can take the... It can detect the human skeleton, like, the joints of the human skeleton. So if you say, take the person's hand, I could actually line that pixel that pixel where the hand is up with the depth image and identify how far away the hand is from the connect sensor so that's pretty nuts yeah that stuff is it's freaking awesome um is that the first connect or the new one and that's the first connect wow um yeah the first connect could do that it's so technically impressive and how much of it's actually utilized, like none of it. Yeah, like I said, as far as practical use, uh, as a piece of technology, it's absolutely amazing. I have no doubt in my mind that HoloLens blows my mind away when you're talking about the technology. As far as practical use, I kind of imagine more of uh, creepy usage than, you know, I imagine it's going to be used more for creepy purposes than um, to actually um, practical and practical betterment of your life. Unless you yeah. consider the creepy as a part of the betterment of your life, which, okay. <laughs> um, we won't go there. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say is there will yeah, be I one look industry at, I look at that will thrive off of like, it. HoloLens can really screw up a person's idea of reality just looking through that because it's like, my TV's right there. I, I can see the news right there. And the person just looks at the wall and I'm like, uh-huh. Now I have a 150-inch TV on my wall. It's like, dude, my TV is right there. I, I'm watching the news right now. And then the person who doesn't have HoloLens looks at the blank white wall and he just looks back and I'm like, uh-huh. Are you okay, sir? Uh -huh. Dude, my, I'm watching news on my coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Or it could be really stupid to the point where, hey, this restaurant is HoloLens enabled, which means you're not allowed in here unless you have HoloLens because our menu does not exist unless you have HoloLens. Oh, that'd be ridiculous. That would be just BS. 
The <laughs> a bunch of people just eating what they're hollow lens on yeah and who needs paintings and you know decoration and you know pictures or whatever you just walk into a completely blank slate cafe that has a kitchen in the back and voila you think you're walking into a real cafe when really there's no paintings because cost uh, uh. see how screwed up hololens can make things yeah and then all and then of course there's like uh, I don't know. Some just hack Hololens so you can watch a movie while driving. No, that that, which, that by would the be way, bad. Which, by the way, that was actually one of my concerns when Google Glasses was still a thing. Was um, so I just thought it's like okay, so Google Glasses, they look like normal glasses, almost. So you can kind of get away with doing things on it while driving, even though the law says you can't get pulled over for using Google Glasses while driving. But. Uh, it, it, it's like, are you able to like watch a movie while you're going along? It's, uh. I hope not. That will not be safe at all. Oh yeah, for people sure. will do it. Just, hollow lens. Put a hot woman next to the seat. You will drive a lot more safely. <sighs> It'll be oh. ridiculous. But yeah, that tech demo of hollow lens is. Uh, yeah, it blew everyone. It blew so many people's minds away. But obviously, once you step outside, you're like, okay, so how can I use that in my life? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure it has minor practical usage, such as displaying how to cook food. Like cooking food, I imagine Hollands would make me learn cooking food a little bit easier because at least it would show me a step by step. Oh, I can see it being good for education purposes. For Absolutely, education purposes, like, like I'm sure, like simulated operations and stuff like that. Would be for great example, for. I want to change the oil in my car, but I sure as hell don't want to screw it up. Hey, maybe I could use Hollands augmented reality, where augmented reality points to that bolt that says "use a wrench to unbolt this," and voila, oil comes out of the car. Or maybe, or maybe I'm thinking. Huh, I really do not know how to fix this electrical wire. Maybe HoloLens can use augmented reality to teach me how to fix the wire. Hey, there's a practical use there. Yeah, I, I can see it being great for educational purposes for sure. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, golf lessons. I was thinking golf lessons, but I'm not sure how well that would work. Um, yeah. Turn your life into a video game. Throw the football as far as possible. <laughs> Challenge failed. You need to throw at least 50 yards. Throw a bomb out there if you want the gold trophy. Yeah. Make football throwing game. But yeah. We that. will see where HoloLens goes. I'm I, sure yeah. there will be very questionable things, but I'm sure there will be very cool things as well. Yeah. It's going to be interesting because they're basically betting on this as the future, and I'm pretty sure it's a much bigger deal than Connect. so, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, going back to Nintendo, the new Metroid was revealed at, it was at E3, right? Yeah, it was at E3, they showed Metroid Prime Federation, and it was getting a little bit of a negative reaction. So, Reggie Fizeme, who was the COO of Nintendo of America, I said, quote, what the fans saw at home saw, wait, what the fans at home saw was something in the Metroid Prime universe that they weren't expecting. The reaction has been negative. There's no sugarcoating it. This is an example where fans who aren't able to get their hands on the game may be a bit of a competitive disadvantage. Everyone has played what we are showing regarding Metroid Prime. They've come across really pleased. All I ask is that the fans trust us. End quote. Um, I mean, I kind of agree with what he's saying. I mean, you can't really go off what you see. You have to get your hands on it and play it um, before you can really judge it. Like, yeah, you can question it, be like, I don't know if I really like where this is going. But until you actually play it, um, it's hard to really judge something. I've never been a big fan of Metroid. Have you, Anthony? I actually played Metroid Prime 3, which I really liked. Yeah. I didn't suck so much at it, and I played Other M, which, despite the crappy story, I still liked. So yes, I like Metroid games. Are you looking forward to this uh, new Metroid game? 
Uh, I actually don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's like some co-op thing. Yeah, I don't know much about it either. <laughs> All I know is that the fans are really angry. It is not conventional, and you know that's the thing that makes, and that's the thing that makes me just sit here and to think, well, maybe people need to calm down a little bit because I'm pretty sure that I understand that fans are angry because they want a traditional Metroid game. Either it's like Metroid Prime or like Super Metroid. And I understand that fans are angry because with the other M, I think it's a good game. But a lot, there are a lot of people that hate it because the story was crap. Because they felt that Samus became a crybaby instead of the hardened bounty hunter that people assumed she was. And that's actually the thing was that all of this, I watched this video a long time ago about Samus and how people were so pissed off how she became a crybaby. But the thing was is that when Samus was shown in all the previous games like Super Metroid and the Prime games and you know, the original Metroid, she never really talked as far as I was aware. And she didn't really show much emotion either. It, it was assumed People assumed she was a hardened bounty hunter, and then when the writers decided that she actually had a sensitive side, everyone went in riots because it went up against what they thought she was. So that's why fan, that's one of the reasons why fans were so pissed. But uh, yeah, it's not a conventional Metroid game, but Metroid is not exactly a big seller, and I'm pretty sure they're trying to experiment with a few new things. And yeah. I think people are kind of still being unfair. It's like, it is not a conventional Metro game, therefore it sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we like that, that, that's don't a little, like that's a little harsh. We like what we're comfortable with. And, yeah, I'm just I was like, that's a little harsh. But, yeah, yeah I'd say, like, give it a chance. Freaking, like, rent it. If you have Gamefly, just rent it. If you don't like it, return it. Simple. Yeah, it just, I mean, there's been plenty of games I'll see them and be like, oh, I don't know about this. But then I play them, they turn out to be really good, so. You'll be surprised, there's like some games that you just, like, just try a game and if, you never know if you're going to get hooked. Like, uh, the one I always remember was uh, Dragon's Dogma. I, I played, I was like, oh, here's a Japanese version of a Western RPG, right? Uh, I played. I played the demo. I liked it. I bought the game, and I played it, and I finished it twice. And my opinion was, honestly, if I were to make a top ten list of the best games that I've played in the last generation, Dragon's Dogma would be top ten. So you never know. Like just trying a game could tell you so much about it. It could tell you whether you're a fan of the style, not a fan of the style. You love the music or story, or you don't tells you a lot Absolutely. Unfortunately, demos, unfortunately demos don't happen anymore so you're just kind of stuck borrowing or renting games yeah even renting i mean unless you have a game it's not like you can be like oh i want to go rent a game it's like oh i have to start a gamefly subscription it's not like you can just like go to blockbuster and rent it i mean redbox is doing rentals but i don't i think very few of them are st- doing PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games. Um, and I, at, least, at least I know that's how it used to be. So, But even now, it's like if you want to rent like one game, there's not really an option for that. You have to start a Gamefly subscription. And maybe you don't want to start a subscription. Maybe you rent a game every now and then, so you don't want to be paying monthly. There's no yeah, blockbuster around anymore. Yeah, there's not anymore. really a cheap go-to way to rent. Right. I'm sure oh, something man. will come along where, I mean, there's this whole cloud thing going on. I'm sure something will come along in the future. But as of right now, there's not really an option for it. There used to be an option. Hey, in the N64 days, I went to Blockbuster, rented a game for, like, what was it, three or five days for, like, five, eight, ten bucks. And oh, yeah, like, like seven that. bucks for, like, a week, yeah. Seven bucks for a week, and if you rented it for way too long, you actually get to keep the game, and you get to play it, and then you get bummed out when you return it, because there was this racing game on the Nintendo 64 that I really, really liked, but then the game had to be returned. So that pissed me off. I forgot what the game was even called. I just knew that it had a Porsche Boxster in it. 
That's all I remember. It was a it was a car that I didn't even know what it was called. I just knew it was really really expensive, but not that fast. But I was for some reason working towards it, and it turns out it was a Porsche Boxster. Like I I remember the back end of that car in that game on a freaking Nintendo sixty four. Oof. Remember back in the day when you'd rent VHS tapes and you had to rewind them before you took them back? <laughs> oh, I remember hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> This was like, uh, yeah, this was the late 90s, so VHS was still a thing. DVDs were still really big, expensive machines. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I actually remember my family, we owned a device that its only sole purpose was to rewind VHS tapes. Because you didn't want your VCR player to break, rewinding all the time. So you had the machine. So you had this. So you bought this little machine to do it for you. It's very handy. I did not know it existed. It's very handy, by the way. Really cool. I didn't know they even had those. I also remember back when Cartoon Network was still around. What I would do is that, like nine or ten o'clock in the morning, I would insert a blank VHS tape that I that was only for myself, and because the cable passed through my uh, VCR, I hit record. So I can rewatch episodes of uh, Dexter's Laboratory. And my dad probably had this little DVR thing set up too. So when the Pokemon movie played at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night, I think, it would record the entire first Pokemon movie and then I could watch it the, the following weekend. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> yeah. The good old days, VHS tapes. Uh, the good forget. days of audio cassettes and VHS. I feel like our generation is the last one that knows what a cassette looks like. Right. It's like we, we like, and the next generation is probably going to be the last one that's going to know what a CD is. They actually sell brand new cars now. There's like a couple or a few brand new cars out there that don't come with CD players because they're being phased out, just like the cassette did. Right. It's all about your phone. Yep. All right, to the last new story, Sega. You know, Sega still exists. Sega they used to exist. have consoles. They used to have consoles back in the day. They used to have this franchise called Sonic that actually used to be really good. <laughs> it um, used to be, yeah, it used to actually be something. Yeah. Blast so, processing. Their CEO and president, Hijime Satomi, came out and made a statement on the quality of their future games. Quote, I've been talking to the employees about how we should start putting serious consideration into quality from this point on, especially in North America and Europe, where it's always been more of a focus on schedules. I believe that if we can't maintain quality, it would be better to not release anything at all. We did our best to build a relationship of mutual trust with older fans of Sega, but looking back, they've been... There have been some titles that have partially betrayed that trust in the past 10 years. Sega in the 90s was known for its brand, but after that we've lost trust and we were left with nothing but reputation. For this reason, we'd like to win back the customer's trust and become a brand once again, end quote. And then after this statement, he was asked about the possibility of seeing a new console game come out. And he said, quote, for the time being... Um, well, he said he couldn't make a promise, but, quote, for the time being, I believe we will announce something for home consoles at Tokyo Game Show. I don't okay, know. Companies well, always make these statements how they're going to change, and they're going to do what everyone wants, and then it usually doesn't happen, and then they'll hype up these announcements. Well, he isn't necessarily hyping it up. He's just saying that they'll probably have something to show at Tokyo Game Show. But usually these announcements are very lackluster, and everyone gets bummed out. So, I wasn't even going to cover this news story, but we didn't really have any news to cover this week, so we threw it into the mix. <laughs> well, so, l l let's be honest here. Yeah, like I said, companies always like make that statement. For example, any EA advert. We are committed to delivering the highest quality of games with flagship franchises such as Madden NFL, Battlefield, FIFA, yeah, you, you, you get the point. <laughs> because 
what kind of company just goes out there and says, we are not committed to the highest quality. We are out there to make as much money as possible and deliver you yearly franchises that, sh- that suck. Yeah, no team gonna, no, no one's going to say that. See, no one's going to ever. They all say they want the highest quality. Of course, you know, you can't, you, it would be funny if Peter Morgan went up there and just said, with EA Access, you get access to our line of mediocre games that have only been made in a year and a half. With lousy art, g- mediocre stories, and hopeless sound design, you too can now access all of these not-so-blockbuster titles for the <laughs> overpriced option of $15 a month. What kind of company talks like that? They don't do that. It's only five dollars a month, though. It's actually not a bad deal. Yeah, if you're an EA fan, that actually isn't too bad. Yeah, but <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, we'll believe it when we see it. Like, if Naughty Dog comes out and says we're committed to the highest quality of games, heck yeah, we believe them. If you can just oh, look yeah, at their games. Because their work backs up everything they say. Yeah. If, and this is Sega coming out saying, we're going to make our games higher quality. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, show us, please, before we can take your statement seriously, sir CEO. Yeah. Well, do you have any yeah. news, Anthony? I that was it for all I had. I'm wiped out. <laughs> Can't figure out any news right now, other than you guys should watch Bronson's Cake Challenge. That's news. So oh, yes. when we were at E3, uh, I think it was like the year prior, or somewhere in between, uh, people asked Bronson or challenged Bronson to eat an entire cake. So. Uh, yeah, so Bronson actually did attempt to eat an entire cake, or I should say the equivalent of an entire cake, and that video is already up by the time this podcast is up, so go watch it. I think see him fail miserably. <laughs> Don't spoil the ending, come on. <laughs> they need to see if he made it or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, well, they have, a, they have a big surprise. Yeah, I watch our behind-the-scenes stuff also, um... Hope it was entertaining to watch. Uh, all three parts. I haven't watched. I saw that went on the site, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Um, part one was mostly day negative one. Part two is pretty much day zero, and part three is everything else, including us playing Rock Band, or all of us and Nick at the camera, I should say. Yes. We're playing, I, I believe, that thing called Love by the Darkness because let's be honest here, who doesn't when Bronson's around? <laughs> uh. He always plays that song on Sing Star and Rock Band. Actually, in Rock Band, a Rock Band is usually Journey, but yeah. I would think he would get tired of it, but. <laughs> Obviously not. <sighs> okay, can I pass out now, please? Yes, do we have any comments or questions? Uh, actually, let me load that now. You've made it, Anthony, you've made it. I just need to stay awake for five more minutes. <laughs> just need to stay awake for five more minutes as, uh, I find out that nobody commented. Oh my gosh, guys, you're killing us. You are killing us. Come on, guys. It's been like, this is like two or three weeks in a row where you guys have not commented. Come on, guys. Like, send us a stupid question if you have to. Yeah. Like, yeah, just send us a stupid question. If it's stupid, at least like just Like, ask, like, ask, uh... I just ask, like, hey, Anthony, do you you have a stuffed animal collection sitting on top of your drawer? (laughs) Yeah, like, (laughs) like, ask, like, you could ask stuff like that. (laughs) <laughs> That's and great. for the record that answer is yes <laughs> there are do? small little stuffed animals sitting on my door hey I kind of want some cuteness in my room come on oh my gosh wow what I wow, don't see anything Anthony, wrong I've known you for I don't really see anything wrong with having that. a teddy I don't see what's wrong with having a lobster two teddy bears um a prinny from Disgaea a <laughs> squirtle a raichu a tiger two tigers and a snowman and a snow bear 
and a dog. Small little stuffed animal sitting on my drawer. I don't really see anything wrong with that, honestly. Well, everyone listening, there you go. You can comment on that. Is that weird? <laughs> Is that weird? I don't think it's weird. Well, if anything, it everyone, makes me more attracted. feel free to let Anthony know what you think. Well, if anything, it makes me more attracted to the ladies, okay? <laughs> or at least I think it does, but I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Unscripted Access. Hopefully next week we'll have more than two people, but hopefully also next week we'll have some comments and questions, guys. Come on. Bring them. I know you guys yes, are please. listening because you ever, John and I are streaming on Twitch. You guys are talking about the podcast. Say something in the comments que- in the comments section. Come on, guys. So please be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Gamer Access. Follow us at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Gamer Access. Be sure to keep checking us out at the Gamer And follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the Gamer Access if you are not already. That concludes the show for this week. We're out. Bye.